Total War Rome Remastered was just announced today, and it's time to plug back into your childhood and play through the wild landscape of antiquity, smashing your cataphracts into the rebel armies that will pop up all over your empire. Whether playing for the first time or reliving the glory days, a lot has changed in Total War Rome Remastered, but also a lot has stayed the same. This is a total rebuilding of the game from the ground up. New models, textures, UI, everything. In this video today, I want to go through eight of the big improvements I am most excited for with Rome Remastered. In keeping with my tradition of front-loading information in my videos, you can find each of the items I'm going to talk about listed in the description as well as chapters within the timeline that you can quickly navigate to if you'd like to jump ahead. Before we get started, if you have yet to pick up Rome Remastered, please feel free to use my link in the description to my Nexus store. They have an awesome relationship with the developers where they get Steam keys directly from them, and it's a great way to support the channel. You can also sign up on my Patreon or YouTube memberships with links in the description. I will say, though, as of the posting of this video, Rome might not be active on Nexus for a day or two, and the 50% loyalty discount will more than likely not be active through Nexus. So please, please, please use whatever means work best for you. Don't let that 50% go to waste. But let's get started on eight improvements coming with Total War Rome Remastered. And the first item on our list is the remastered customization. So like a lot of remastered games out there, you can choose the level of customization of how remastered you want the game to be. Do you want it to play along the lines of the classic Rome Total War, or do you want it to be more along the lines of the new updated features with remastered? And this really kind of goes through a bunch of different categories. You've got unit balancing for actual combat in the game. Um, do you want the cavalry to be as devastating as it was in the original, or do you want it to be you know, slightly toned down like it is in the remastered? Don't worry, cavalry is still just stupid strong. Uh, battles, you can have night battles at any point in the game. Previously, night battles were relegated only to Barbarian Invasion, but we'll be going into that in its own separate category on the video, so you can wait for that in a little bit. But all the new campaign improvements, um, the end turn button will be replaced with a um, alert button if you have missed some things, like you get with current Total War games. Diplomacy has had some enhanced features brought into the game with the remastered version, but you can again put this back to classic. And the new merchant, which has been added into the game, which is a new agent that can actually block specific um, trade routes and trade goods in specific areas. So this is a really nice way to kind of tailor your experience with Total War Rome Remastered. Next up on our list is three games in one. So with Rome Remastered, you get all three versions of Total War Rome. You get Barbarian Invasion, Alexander the Great, and the base game. Now, I can't quite show you any of the DLC just yet as they're still in pre-production. We're still a month out from release in April, but um, you will be getting a total of 38 playable factions that you can play across any variation of the game. Again, if it's in Barbarian Invasion, if it's in the base game, or if it's in Alexander. And like I've said before, some of the features that were only in one of the DLCs or another of the DLCs have been brought across all three. So this is a really great way to finally jump into those if you didn't get a chance to play them in the past. I know personally when I picked up Total War Rome when I was like two, um, I only got Barbarian Invasion which allowed me to play that and the base game and I never really got a chance to sink my teeth into the Alexander DLC so this is a great chance for me to finally play through Alexander the Great and conquer from Macedonia all the way across Anatolia and even further east. Finally, jumping into the game, we can talk about the improved UI. So you can already see the game looks way different than it did when it first came out. And through this, we get a lot of easy navigation across the board here. We get the settlements, um, we have our individual armies here, we have our agents, which we'll go into in a bit, and our fleets. So it gives you an ability to kind of just navigate through your entire empire through these easy little menus to jump into. And from there, you can really do a whole lot. The game is a lot more streamlined. It's taken a lot of the conventions of some of the more recent Total Wars and jammed them into Total War Rome. So when you're playing through this, you're not looking for those quality of life changes that you're become used to playing Medieval 2 or Empire or Attila or Warhammer 2, Three Kingdoms, Troy, whatever it is, how many games that have come be, uh, or after, um, or Shogun 2, that have come after uh, Rome. 
And as you can even see here, uh, you have some nice UI scaling that has been added into the game. I go into settings, I go into graphic settings, I can now do that resolution and UI scaling here. Dropping this down just a little bit. Let's just go to 80 just to just to show it off. And we can see that we get a nice big amount of uh, land to look at here. And with this, we also get enhanced iconography. So if I click over here, I go over to armies. You can see the icons have changed. They look a little bit cleaner, um, but they're still essentially the overall same look that they had in Rome Classic. So you still get that Rome Classic vibe with just an updated uh, kind of facelift because you get UHD support, 4K, uh, improved sound mix across the whole board. So the game sounds like you're not playing some game that was made in 2001. It has that very nice sound quality update too. So a lot of really nice UI improvements and quality of life has been in viewed into Rome Remastered. Continuing on with our UI improvements, we have the new Agent Hub. So you can navigate to this button and you can see all of your agents across the map, but not just yours, pretty much everyone's, right? But if I click down here at my faction icon, and then I click this little guy, well, it's already selected, I have my Agent Hub, and it will put in a list all of my agents and their type. We have the spy, we have a diplomat, and then there's a third new agent, the merchant. I have their skill level and I have what they're doing and where they're located. So it's a pretty nice little menu here to quickly navigate to each one of my agents. But there's even more I can do from this menu. So take Philip, for example. I can send him to spy on Sidon and it has got a 75% success rate and it's gonna take three turns to achieve. I click this and I press confirm and I can see it's already plotted on the map for me. He's going to move over there and then he is going to do the spying. Uh, for example, too, let's say I take a look at this character. Um, I know a little bit more about the, uh, the settlement that he's by because he's next to it. So I can have him negotiate with it or I can have him negotiate with Sidon. So I have these two settlements that I can have this diplomat negotiate with. And if I press this button, I can locate it quickly on the map to find out where it is. So. This is a pretty powerful way to navigate your way across all of the agents you're going to have in the game. Remember, this is Total War Rome. So in order to do any kind of diplomacy, you have to initiate it through your diplomats and creating diplomats, sending them across the map is just one of the things that you're going to be doing in the game. So let's take a look at some of these other ones here. So I can see this ability to negotiate with Captain Antiochus. I can have, have him go over there and do some initial negotiations or have this one do it with another diplomat. So if I press confirm, He'll jump. He's already right next to him. He'll jump into this and we can do private dealings with a bribe. I can offer or I can request certain things or make declarations like a trade embargo. These are some of the new things that have been brought in with the uh, diplomatic negotiations that have been added in the remastered version. Uh, but you can see our relationship, our strength comparison, reputation back and forth. So there's a lot of really cool new features that have been added to this menu that have given us, again, a further quality of life improvement to the way agents are navigated, but namely the way that the diplomacy works in all of Total War Rome Remastered. The last UI upgrade I really wanna talk about is the new Overworld map. So if I press tab, I get this. I can see the entire map and I have a lot of filters I can apply to the map that can really show me what is going on with a lot of granularity. And I can turn things on or off if I want to say, hey, you know, I don't really need to know where the villages, towns, large towns, minor cities, or large cities are. I just want huge cities. So you can have those things ticking off if you so wish. You can go through recruiting or constructing, upgrade possible, settlement idle, your allies, your enemies, your neutral. It's a really great way to look at the map in a real good color coding just to decide what's going on. Like maybe I just want to see where my agents are. Okay, now I know where they are on the map or I just wanna see the uh, actual trade resources, I can press this button and I know where they are on the map. You don't have to find some sort of like obscure picture on uh, Google images of all of them that's like a resolution 300 by 300 pixels. You can just press this button and find them all. You can press this right here. Like there's a lot of really awesome things that you can get a lot of granularity on this map. And actually it's something that I kind of want to see in future or even current Total War series. We do get something kind of similar to this, but the actual filter system 
doesn't seem as nicely laid out as this. This is really easy to kind of navigate through. It's not as jankety as it can be, especially like in Rome 2, or I'm sorry, uh, Warhammer 2, where I feel like a lot of those filters actually just make it hard to understand what's going on. But then again, these resources aren't as important as they are going to be in Rome Remastered. But this is a real great feature that's been added into the game, and I think it makes navigating your growing empire way, way easier, especially with all the moving pieces you're gonna have on the board. Jumping over to the battle map, we can finally talk about the overhauled graphics for the game. Now, they have completely rebuilt all these models from the ground up. They have rendered actual realistic lighting on them. So depending on which environment you're fighting in the game, they're going to look different. Like right now, this is midday and I think uh, Greece. But if I were to fight in Gaul and it's not midday, it's like a late afternoon or it's hazy out, the lighting is actually going to reflect off of the armor differently and the swords. It's going to have a whole different atmospheric effect across everything and as you can see since we're playing as the Seleucids we get standard legionnaires which look great and we have some awesome pikemen and we've got some war elephants in the back over there some cataphracts and you can see that the uh the map is experiencing as I go by you can, there's clouds that are rolling over the sun and you can see how it just got darker and brighter right there it's really really cool like there's a lot of actual weather effects in the game that are working um, to really create this realistic lighting across everything and i think they said there's something like 400 combinations per model per unit so even though you'll get something that looks somewhat the same there's still variations in the face enough like you can see that there's scarring and a little bit of um not, not wear and tear, that's a human face I'm talking about, but there's like dirt on this guy's face, not so much on here. He's got a soul patch because he's ready to go to TGI Fridays for unlimited apps. I mean, there's a bunch of different little nuances in every single face on these characters. So it does make for a more realistic and, you know, lifelike portrayal of these uh, legionnaires. Take a look over here at these war elephants. You can see them all hot and heavy. Ready to smash into stuff. And my favorite unit in the game is Cataphracts. Although they did do rebalancing, they're still disgustingly strong. And even though we're talking about the graphics right now, I will warn you ahead of time. The rate of play in the battles for Rome Total War was very quick. And I guess I forgot about that because it is still very quick and remastered. And we'll just quickly look over the battlefield here. I'll unpause it just so you can see. But... As I select things, I get a lot of really quick readouts of what the actual unit's general health is, its ammunition, its morale, its level of whether or not it's exhausted or whether it's fresh. So there are a lot of improvements to just the battle map alone that make playing Rome Remastered so much more exciting this time around. Next up are the night battles. Now, night battles are in a barbarian invasion, but with the new remastered, they've been added to both the base game and Alexander, giving you the ability to fight, well, at night. And with the new lighting that's been added into the game, you can see that the fire kind of reflects off the armor differently. You get a nice, really cool heat shimmer. And when I unpause this, you're going to see the rain coming down and my catapults firing and the archers firing. Um, it's a really, really awesome way to bring, it doesn't need to just be a siege battle, but siege battles especially have that really cool epic vibe to them with this new night battle mechanic. So I'm going to go ahead and unpause here. You can already see Stuff's starting to just kind of go off across the battlefield. We'll get over here to my onagers, which are starting to shoot too. And you'll be able to see all this new lighting kind of kicking off across the battlefield here. And I'm really, really excited about this. I think it really makes the game look awesome. It comes to life. You can see the siege tower just getting lit on fire. All my archers are going to start shooting into the defenses. And look at that. I just kind of pews off the wall there. Like, it looks so good. And it's just a really cool remaster. I really like this because I would argue that Rome 1 and 2 and Medieval have some really awesome fun siege mechanics, right? You for probably forgot about the sapper points, all of the ladders that you actually have to bring into the game and actually attack the wall with. Like, there are so much, there's so much fun that can be had with these new night battles that really kind of gives the uh, sieges a new lease on life. And you can see this all kind of coming apart. It's pretty, I mean, obviously I'm not doing very well in this siege but the uh the, the new lighting effects are really cool especially if these land and they start lighting these buildings on fire all this will start to look really chaotic as your armies are marching through the cities and all these buildings are just smoldering into ruins and just to jump forward a little bit here you can see those uh, buildings going up in flames and as you kind of pan back over the battlefield here almost down to the troop level 
you can just see half the city, half or a little portion of the city just already going up right now. So again, it really adds a nice amount of life to your siege battles. Last feature I want to talk about is the brand new merchant that was added to Rome Remastered, which you can toggle on or off. Now, as you can see here, this character has his own skill, just like the spy and the diplomat do. It's called finance. And the point of the merchant is threefold. To enable trade with locations that you have yet to establish a trade agreement with, to monopolize an actual uh, trade good on the map, or to buy out another merchant from the map and remove them from the map. So let's go ahead and take a look at that right now. So you've got the, uh, this menu right here is present for any and all agents. Um, I didn't go over that in the agent portion, but if I say click over here to my spy, you see I've got all my options rather than jumping into the actual agent hub if I so wish. But looking at the merchant, we can trade in Athens, and it's pretty low because the trade there is not miraculous right now. We can monopolize olive oil, or we can buy out their merchant. So let's go through these three actions. Obviously, trade in Athens is going to enable trade uh, to and from my home region and the region I've placed my merchant in. So if I place my, my uh, merchant in Athens, that's the region he will trade from to me. But if I say place my merchant over here, I can see that it shows potential merchant income to, and it will trade from this location to the home region. His home region is Sparta. He'll always be um, name of home region. And if I kind of look over here, um, I don't think it can show me this. Yeah, I think I actually have to discover it. There we go. This will show me, okay, this will give me a potential of one, so on and so forth. So why this is important is that I can send my merchant to locations that look like potentially high trade value and start trade with them before my diplomat arrives. Having my diplomat get there and then enable trade agreements actually makes him um, trade for more value. So this is kind of a way to constantly move your merchant around to some of the higher trade locations. Now, monopolize is when you go over to any of these tradable resources on the map, remember, you can press tab and you can press this button to quickly just see those across the map. Um, but if you monopolize it, then you're pretty much restricting the trade of that tra that tradable resource to that faction that owns that resource and you. So it uh, pretty much creates a, a one way trade where no one else can trade with the faction and get marble. It's only going to be you and Macedon, which is a really cool way to negate the tradable resources of maybe your opposing faction or remove someone who has locked out and monopolized a tradable, tradable resource by buying them out, the third big action a merchant can do. So basically it looks at your finance skill versus the merchant or the opponent's merchant skill and gives you a percentage to success. Obviously the higher the better. So my one versus his one makes for a 33% chance to succeed. If I click this, I press confirm, he'll go over there. Oh, it succeeded, I knocked him out. And now I can monopolize silver because he was blocking silver. So you can see how the merchant can enable you to do a lot of really cool stuff when it comes to trade. And I can, now that I've gotten more finance, I can now go buy out Antiochus of Corinth. Like it, there's a lot of really cool mechanics that they've added with the merchant that makes it um, very fun. And you can simply just press auto manage if you want and the AI will take care of it. But this is a really cool way to kind of game the uh, uh, tradable resources in the game and help you really bolster your income depending upon where you are in the map. And with that, it brings our video to a close. And there are still some things I still didn't go over, like each faction's new intro that's been added into the game, where it uses this similar kind of motif you see right now, cycling with uh, these hand-drawn pictures. Uh, there's a lot of other stuff, like the new unit icons, a bunch of other little things that I have yet to highlight. The game does come out April 29th, so there's still plenty of time to see a lot of these new features and decide if you want to jump back into Total War Rome Remastered. But hopefully, like I said, this at least gave you a quick crash course on some of the new features coming into the game. If you have not yet purchased Rome Remastered, like I've said before, you can use my Nexus link in the description. It's a great way to support the channel. But if you have any questions about uh, Rome Remastered, please, by all means, 
Uh, leave a comment below. Let me know what you're most excited about with the remastered or what you're maybe most apprehensive about or something you just haven't gotten enough information on. I will do my best to answer it to the best of my ability as always. But thank you so much for watching here today. Have a good one and take care.